Dudes, I live in the country now. This is awesome. And room. Please ignore all the crap in my back seat. It's from all the consistent trips I've been taking recently. It's a mess. And I know it. Right, so it's hard for me to back out of this driveway, so I'm gonna go country boy and go off-roading. An off-roading Mustang, who knew? What is up guys, David here for another vloggity vlog. And I hope that every single one of you is having a wonderful day. So anyway, let's get to the topic that the title says in the video, and that is something I think all of us in the car world and the non-car world have dealt with. And what is that? It's road rage. It's when you're having a bad day, and your day just keeps getting worse, and it keeps getting worse, and it keeps getting worse, and then you hop in your car, and then every little thing in the world just sucks. It's horrible. So like, I'm driving down the road right now, and I'd be mad that the pavement changed color. Oh, that's stupid. Why would they do such a thing? It really brought the road together, man. Big Lebowski joke, so. Okay, it could be the old person in front of you who's driving 30 miles under the speed limit. It could be you sitting at a stoplight for minutes. It could be the person in front of you not going when the light is green. It could be the person who cuts you off without the blinker. It's really that hard to turn your blinker on. I mean, look at this effort. That was so hard. Here's that funny saying where you can drive as crazy as you want as long as you use your turn signal and people really can't get that mad. But it's when you don't turn it on is when everybody gets mad. But like I said earlier, road rage is typically a root of a problem that's already in your life. So like it's like a subtext almost. There's an underlying problem that you've had that day or in your life that's just beating you up in your subconscious. But then when you get on the road and people just start being stupid, which, let's just face it, there's a lot of dumb drivers out there. Yeah, it doesn't help. I'm gonna tell you probably my worst case of road rage I've ever had, which is funny because not only was it their fault, it was my fault. So go back two years ago, and I'm still in college, and I still live in a dorm, and it's Christmas break. I'm ready. I've got my semester done. I did my finals. I did great. I'm like, wow, I made it. I'm good. Time for Christmas break. The thing is, this is back when I lived in Virginia Beach and I'm now in the Richmond area of Virginia. And it's about a two hour ballpark drive without traffic. A lot of the highways, they have these underwater tunnels. There's the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, and then there's 664, which is Merrimack Tunnel. There's a bunch of these underwater tunnels. So with that, you go from four lanes or five lanes to two lanes. No bueno. Everybody congests and merges at the last second, and you get the people who cut in front of everybody and go around and they don't wait, which is such a, that's that's like one thing to start causing road rage. It's like, dude, wait like everybody else. Don't be that guy. And then I go back and I'm like, oh yeah, I've been that guy before. So I sit in that traffic for like two and a half hours and I'm just sitting there, you know, ranting and venting about how stupid this is and how Virginia Beach's road infrastructure needs to be worked on. And I'm saying this all to myself because I'm bored in the car. So I finally make it to pretty much the edge of the traffic and I make it to Williamsburg, Virginia. You know, the good old colonial Williamsburg. And then I'd realized I had screwed up. And then I touched my pocket right here to make sure that I had everything. And I was too stupid to not double check when I was back at the dorm because I was so excited about going home that I had forgotten my phone. And I was gonna be home, I was gonna be home for like uh, almost two weeks, so I had to have my phone. So then David broke bad. I pulled a freaking Heisenberg on myself. I started venting and yelling and all these. I had a bad temper at one point in my life, a really bad temper. And so, but you know, over time you get older, you realize it's kind of dumb. Okay, everybody still has their freakouts occasionally, but this is by far the worst kind of mental breakdown freakout I've ever had when it came to something small. I'd already had all this stress from the finals, I'd have already had all this stress from not sleeping. I just wanted to be home, and then all of a sudden I realized that I had to drive all the way back. So then I sat in another two hours of tunnel traffic, came all the way back, Got my phone, sat down, watched like an episode of something on TV to like cool down. 
and then uh, made some food, drove back home with zero traffic because it was that late at night. So when I ever got mad in road rage, I would always like talk in third person like, David, you freaking idiot, blah, 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 and I'd just go ham. I think I got that from my dad. Sorry, dad, if you're watching. But my dad, you know, when he like plays golf, gets mad when he talks in third person. Side note, when we play golf, we're like the real life Happy Gilmore, so you never want to see that. Other parts of road raids that have always bugged me is, you know, when you're in traffic and you finally get to the end of traffic and you realized there was nothing there. There was just a few bad drivers that weren't paying attention or were driving so slow to cause mile backups. I mean, that's saying something. That's talent right there. The way I deal with road rage is I look into the future, not like psychic, but I just think about the future and how I'll look back at it and be like, why was I really that mad? Or why was I really that upset when eventually it's gonna be all right? So like if I'm sitting in traffic, I'll find a way to entertain myself just by like kind of looking around. You know, just focus on your environment around you and not the cars, if that makes sense. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to drive. But, you know, focus on nature or birds or clouds. You'll be like, what's that cloud look like? Play that old game. That's how I kind of cope with it. Traffic is something that doesn't bug me as much as it used to, for sure. People cutting me off though. I'm st I still get upset about that. I'm not gonna lie to you. The best line ever was when somebody almost sideswiped me, like changed lanes without looking, no blinker, no look, no anything. They just were like, yep, yeah, I'm doing it. And we get to the next stoplight and I look at them and I just kinda, you know, whatever, and I brush it off and they roll down their window and they go, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. And I'm like, how do you miss a bright blue car? How do you miss the Smurf? I don't know. Whenever you see somebody get away with some kind of crazy maneuver while you're driving and you're just like, that was so illegal. You're such an idiot. And then you're just like, step. Step it right now. And then when you go by them, you just want to be like, screw you. But some good advice would be if somebody does make you mad on the road, let it go. Just let it go. Don't get out of your car. Don't hard accelerate like I did. That was a joke. Don't do any of that because that's just going to lead to more problems. It's going to build up more rage in that other person. And then next thing you know, you're either going to crash or you're going to be in some lawsuit somewhere where some guy punched another dude. Too soon, Clarkson? Sorry. I, I still love you. I wish you were on top gear still. Another way I kind of deal with road rage is avoid traffic altogether. A lot of the times I'll look at my Google Maps and I'll see that there might be a longer route, say like a back road or something like that, and maybe it'll take a little bit longer, but at least you're moving. At least your mind is focused on driving and you're not so focused in the moment this really sucky moment, you know? Driving on back roads therapeutic, right? Right, right now, I'm getting my serotonin from driving this back road. It's wonderful. The angry moments typically happen to me on these really long road trips that I do, because you'll have a really smooth road trip and then something will happen. You know, power lines fell down or an 18-wheeler tipped over or something just crazy happens and you have to deal with it. And then you get a text from a friend going, you should have taken this alternate route, man. I told you so. And you're like, yeah, but my GPS said this was the fastest way, so I defied logic and listened to it. You gotta have that Zen mindset, you know, that, that very at one spiritual, like at peace kind of mindset whenever you're having a road rage moment. So with that, how do you guys all deal with road rage? Do you just let it happen? Do you let the fire come out of your head? Or do you just kind of try to stay calm? Let me know in the comment section below on how you deal with road rage. I want to thank every single one of you for watching this vlog and vlog. And I will see you guys next time. And take it easy. Have a fantastic day. Vlog!